Hello guys, welcome back to Arx Angel RC. Today, finally, after much delay, I will be reviewing the Atom RC Dolphin. Also, I got my first sponsor for a few videos, but more on that a bit later on. Now, don't blame the plane for the delay. The issue was a mix of oversights and wrong setups, which in turn led to a very few good flights and then a series of takeoff crashes, which left the poor thing scarred, but also looking like a war hero. So, not all bad. Not the plane's fault really, first there was an issue with board orientation, then torque rolls, reverse controls, over shimmed motor, you get the idea, which resulted in the inevitable brakes, but good thing is, the foam on the dolphin is quite nice and it breaks cleanly without warping, squashing or deforming, so it is very easy to put back together. That being said, if you use a transparent glue for the job there wouldn't even be a trace of it easily visible, but I used this yellow one on purpose. I wanted the scars to be visible, just thought this gave the plane a bit more character and it wouldn't require painting to get that look. As far as the build goes, the plane is pretty quick and easy to put together and there is very little that needs gluing on it. In fact, only the vertical fins need gluing, everything else is either pre-installed in the factory or mounts up with bolts. However, out of experience, I can tell you that it is a good idea to re-glue some of the plywood pieces, most important of which is the motor mount, which came undone on the first landing. I glued it in and it came off again during the last failed takeoff from the failure series, so it is proving to be quite the trickster this one, so make sure you glue it in there good, because it does like to pop out. Also, at least on my Dolphin, the motor mount was pointed up a good deal, so over the first two successful flights, before the crash bonanza started, it would pitch up a lot, especially at higher throttle, so I did end up shimming the motor on top to bring it down a bit, and it was a lot better after that. Just something to keep in mind, check it while putting the plane together. For this build I decided to go with a 4S battery, so ESC of choice is a 30 amp Cicada which fits perfectly in the allotted space underneath the plane. I also used an Emacs RS2205 2300kV motor which I've had for ages, only one, but I can't recall where from or why, but I thought it would be a nice fit for this plane, at least for starters. It is spinning a 6x4.5 prop and I dropped in one of my AKK F4 Pro stacks, wiring and all, so really set up for this plane took very little time. I did make use of the provided spaces to mount the autopilot stack and also improvised a bit for the wiring, utilizing some of the other spaces in there, and just in case you are wondering why the video transmitter is right smack in the middle of the compartment, it is because it has a cable soldered to it, the other end of which I've put through the designated mounting point for the antenna, so basically this is where the video transmitter ended up. I did have to cut some foam around that connector so I could screw in the antenna properly. On the opposite side I mounted the FR Sky R9 Slim antenna and receiver, so this model should have some decent range for control as I've had very good luck with the R9 system so far. Moving to the front, I decided on a two camera setup, a Runcam FPV pilot camera on top and an HD recording camera on the bottom. Sadly the DJI Osmo Action does not fit well in this compartment, or at least it won't fit well without some sort of modification, which I wasn't willing to do. So I went with the Ekken H6S. Initially I did want to use its built-in stabilization, but after the first flight and seeing the resulting footage, I quickly turned that feature off. It is no DJI sadly. However, putting that much weight right in the nose meant that whatever battery I chose to go with needed to go quite far back in order to get a close to neutral balance, else the plane would be quite nose heavy. I tested quite a few batteries, but sadly none of my lithium iron packs would work for this plane at this time, or at least with that HD camera in the nose, so I resorted to an old 1800 mAh 4S Nanotech LiPo pack. I haven't flown with a LiPo battery in quite a while, so this was going to be fun. I also had to push it so far back in order to balance the plane that it had to go inside the hole connecting the forward and aft compartments, 
and actually none of my lithium iron packs could even fit in there so this really was the only option for the time being. The high C rating meant that it was going to at least handle the high current drain of the motor easier than the lithium ions would. So now the plane was ready for flight but before I go break it I just want to turn your attention to something. The belly skids. I absolutely love these. They are quite hard, seem to be glued well and do an absolutely magnificent job of protecting the belly of the plane on landings. Take note other manufacturers, this is how you do landing skids. Some people did mention theirs came weirdly glued in and not very well done but they can be removed and re-glued but for me these are a treasure to have on any model and have kept my dolphin's belly pretty safe throughout this whole ordeal. So as you already saw the beginning of this plane's flight journey was not ideal by far but after the last incident I had now sorted out all issues, glued whatever needed gluing and was confident things were going to go well this time around and they did. Perfect takeoff in auto mode just because it can. Also this time around I increased the banking angle so now turning the plane around in fly-by-wire A mode did not have a radius of 1 km like it used to. As usual I pointed the plane up and throttled up in order to gain some altitude to do the standard stall test and imagine my surprise when not only it didn't stall but it didn't even turn, just kept going straight with a very slight turn resulting from the trim. It would shake around for an instant but then and level out and fly straight again. True that was in fly by wire A mode so stabilization was working but still pretty impressive compared to other models. The same test in manual mode had a slightly different outcome. This time the plane did go into a right turn kind of thing, not a tip stall by any measure and this was boring and slow as hell so I just gave up pulling on the elevator. It could be the relatively small control surface throws that just don't allow it to overdo the up elevator and tip stall which is a good thing. I like it, builds up confidence that way so you can let it glide hands off and it will not try to kill itself in an instant. Also I did notice the plane does indeed glide very well especially in fly by wire A mode which is a given since it can't really stow which made landings literally a hands off experience and that doesn't happen often for me so scoring extra points here as well. It is just effortless and I really enjoyed this. Then I wanted to do some distance flying so headed off to the nearby dam but I soon remembered that I was flying with a very old LiPo battery whose performance is unknown to me at this point but is severely lacking in capacity compared to the lithium ion packs I've been flying with over the past few years so I wasn't going to go far out anyway. Flew for a bit around the lake and then headed up the mountain but that issue is still present there so as soon as the tracker started rotating that way FPV feed started to worsen so I headed back. But here's the thing about this plane. Long range and endurance aren't really the plane's strong suit. There are other models more suited for the job. The Dolphin shines when you keep it close, put it in manual mode and just max out the throttle. It is quick with the setup I have but it can be much quicker if that is the goal. Even with my setup it has a darn good vertical and it just keeps going up. It is quick and nimble and an unbelievable amount of fun. I actually found myself primarily flying it in manual mode and having a blast literally in a 100 meter radius around me. Neither the FPV system was used nor the stabilizing functions of the autopilot, just pure manual fun. Kinda makes me wonder how much more of a vertical it will have if I actually scrap the whole FPV system, shedding quite a lot of weight and just keeping the autopilot for return to home and stabilization as a safety measure just in case. Even with my puny motor it would probably go up vertically until the battery runs out and wouldn't break a sweat. The potential certainly is there but I'm also a sucker for FPV so won't really do that because then there will be nothing on board to record all of this. But even so I had a blast. The plane was amazing, handled so well, didn't stow which allowed me to more confidently fly it in a much tighter circle around me and have a great deal of fun. Some of which not too high above the ground.
A strong headwind will help slow it down a bit, but in general it does like to go fast and seems to enjoy all sorts of stick bashing in random directions, but still remains ever so responsive and adequate through the motions. In terms of improvements, it really could use a bit of tail tapering and moving the motor back a few centimeters, but nothing nearly as drastic as what the duck had to go through to get it moving. Also, because I have a large recording camera in the nose, I'm not using the nice and pointy nose piece, but one of the split type cameras could be made to work with that one and will make the plane even more aerodynamic and quick and will also improve efficiency a decent amount. I will have to look into optimizing airflow at the back mainly, but could figure out something for the front, but that would be a bit further down the line. Now, before I conclude, I'd like to say a few words about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online skillsharing platform offering a wide variety of online courses on a host of topics. For instance, there are a number of courses on how to design your very own PCB boards, which is a useful skill in today's world. Or perhaps a course or two on how to design for 3D printing and how to 3D print whatever your heart desires, which always comes in handy and its applicability goes far beyond the RC hobby. Also, you may want to take up knitting to calm your nerves from wrestling with iNav settings all day long, for instance. A class that has been of a particular interest to me has been this Adobe Illustrator one by Daniel Scott, an Adobe certified trainer. I use Adobe Illustrator quite often in my work and I'm constantly looking to learn new things about it and improve my skills and this class is going to serve me quite well. Basically, if you are looking to gain a new skill or a few, Skillshare is the place to do it. No ads, no nonsense, just learning in a great community. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the video description below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So have at it. So this about wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please like, share, subscribe, comment and just engage with it in any way as this helps it get seen more and helps this channel grow. Also in the video description below you will find links to most of what was used in this video and since those are affiliate links I get a small commission at no additional cost to you should you decide to buy anything via those links which in turn helps support this channel and my family. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to express my endless gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. Happy and safe flying and I will see you in the next video.